Hey friends, your friendly neighborhood and genderqueer relative here, Kai. Uh, just gonna make some fried rice tonight. I have gathered a few simple ingredients and of course the best part of making fried rice is using up leftover rice. So hopefully you have somewhere between like three and five cups of cooked rice. It's already cold, it's been in the fridge for a day. If not, you can make it fresh, but that's going to take longer. Meanwhile, I need some tea, so I'm gonna pull down some tea and get started with that, and then we'll start cooking. I think it's really important to uh, have something good to keep you going, even while you're making a meal for everyone else. This is actually a uh, smoked tea that is caffeine-free because it's late, and I'm caffeine-sensitive, so I only drink caffeine until about noon. got smoked barley in it, roasted barley, which is a perfect substitute for a roasted caffeinated tea. Anyway, of course, uh, we're going to start out with a bunch of garlic and a small onion that I'm going to chop up right now. And first I'm going to take the outside layer off, apparently. This is a good example of why you should probably get your knives sharpened regularly, and if it weren't a pandemic, I would absolutely be doing that. Now, today I'm going to cook this stuff in a wok, but it's not necessary for you to have a wok to make fried rice. You just need a big pan with ideally a high side so you don't spill everything all over the place. Uh, now the key, of course, to good fried rice is having lots of tasty vegetables in it. And if you're going to have fried rice that's vegetarian, like mine, but still has egg in it, you can add some extra protein by making sure that you have uh, some peeled edamame, shelled edamame to include. Now I'm going to chop this onion fairly finely. I'm also going to include plenty of garlic because I love garlic and so does everyone in my family. I think I've got about 11 small cloves here that are already peeled for ease of use. And I am just going to kind of smash them as I go and then rough chop them. I'm not really worried about my garlic being like very small because it's going to of course infuse everything via being cooked in the oil. Now the best part here about using some vegetables that are pre like frozen vegetable mixes for your fried rice is that you can just half cook them in the microwave first and then fry them and they'll be a lot uh, more cohesive that way. Of course you can chop the vegetables, chopped carrot, fresh peas, uh, very common vegetables to go in fried rice. I have a hard time finding a peas and corn or peas and carrots mix. It's just peas and carrots so I always wind up with this uh, peas and carrots and corn and green beans mix. And then there's also shelled soybeans. So in this particular case though, I'm going to use the soybeans. I'm not going to use this mix because it's a lot of different vegetable textures and I'm just going to grab a fresh carrot to cut up. And if you like, you can also grate a little bit of ginger to throw into your fried rice because it's very tasty. So I'm just going to get this carrot sliced up. And I'm also going to chop up some green onions that I have that are extra as well. But Kai, you already have yellow onion in there, so why do you need green onion? Well, because they have completely different flavors, and because I like it, that's why. I try to make the pieces of vegetables that are going into like a stir fry like this very thin and small, because that way they cook 
fairly evenly, and you don't have this problem where the thing is cooked as you intended. So I'll just chop these very thinly. Of course, they won't be the pretty squared carrots that you would normally get in like takeout fried rice, but you're gonna eat them right away. So presentation is less important than flavor in this case. And that is why I will never be a competitor on any great anything bake up. Because I would fail presentation. But here we are. Some nicely chopped carrots. Again, I have this whole bag of soybeans. And normally, you should boil this. At least in this bag. This is not a very microwavable bag. But I am instead going to stick it in the microwave for three minutes, which is not long enough to cook them all the way. It is long enough to fully defrost them so I can toss them into the stir fry. Now, as you can see, my water has stopped boiling. So I'm just going to pour this over my tea. If you're like me and you're the sort of person who loses track of time or loses track of reality, it's great to have teas like this where if you forget about it, it's not going to become bitter. Now, I've got my chopped vegetables here. I also have my mushrooms, which I'll cut up in a second. First, I'm going to go ahead and heat my wok here. And I'm going to put it on medium to fry up these vegetables. And then I'm going to pour just a little bit of oil in here. Not too much. Enough to fry the vegetables in. And of course it's a good idea to use a wooden spoon inside a wok. Especially if you have a non-stick wok like this one is. You don't want to scratch up the interior. Now I will say that uh, this is a great way to use up vegetables that are getting a little bit iffy. Now, maybe you forgot about in the fridge. Uh, I love throwing asparagus or broccoli into my fried rice, but again, you have to cut the pieces small enough or pre-steam them so that everything cooks at the same rate. Otherwise, you just have a mess. Now, as soon as this gets hot, which is not very long out, I'm going to go ahead and toss all these vegetables in here. As I said, ah, you can bring a sizzle. As I said, uh, you can also braid up a little ginger to go in here. I'm a big fan of putting grated ginger in fried rice. I'm just gonna stir this around and let these get cooking. And while those are sauteing in there, starting to cook, I am gonna hurry up and cut up my mushrooms. If I wasn't doing this for a video, I would cut up everything before I started cooking. But since I'm trying to get everything into the same span of time for you, we'll do this. We will cook and cut things at the same time. Now these mushrooms are called shimeji mushrooms or brown beech mushrooms. They're some of my favorites. Uh, they're kind of a little bit noodle-like and they come in clusters and they're really great because they absorb flavor really well and they saute with a nice texture and one packet is a great amount to just do stuff with and they're amazing in soup. So one of my favorite flavors or types of mushrooms. I also always keep all of my kitchen scraps here because I compost. Uh, I'm maybe not the best at it, but I do compost. So we're just gonna, I'm going to turn the heat on this down a little bit. So I don't want the vegetables to get overly toasty before they're actually cooked. So we're going to cook those veggies until they start to soften, and then I'll toss the mushrooms in. And it's also when I will toss in the edamame. And mushrooms don't take nearly as long to cook as other vegetables do. So it's important not to like put them in there at the same time as your hard vegetables. So I'm just going to scoop my mushrooms over on this. And I'm also going to chop up a few green onions. Now, green onions are one of those things that inevitably 
I forget about in the fridge. So sometimes I just let them get a little weird. So I have to pick through these, unfortunately. I like the white parts of the green onions as much as I do the green parts. But we're going to save some of the white parts here because we want to put them into a cup of water and let them grow back some green for me. Since we're in the time of year when it's hard to get the green onions. Not to mention this whole pandemic problem. So, I will basically pick over these. And check on my carrot. Obviously, basically you want to check on this a few times until the carrot is nice and soft. Or whatever your hardest vegetable is, it's nice and soft, but not too soft. You don't want it to be, like, mush. You want it to be a nice texture. And then... Once that texture is starting to look pretty good, that's when you pour in your other vegetables. These are going to go last, obviously, since I'm not ready for them yet. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put these mushrooms in. And I'm going to go ahead and put my edamame in, which will add a little more liquid in a scary way. Always make sure the edamame is shelled before you put it into rice, okay? You do not want sh the surprise of edamame shells in your fried rice. Alright, so I'm going to incorporate that all together. And you can start to see my vegetables are looking nice. See? And that's going to take a couple minutes to fry up. And meanwhile, of course, I'm back to chopping these green onions. You probably don't want brown onions. Not in this case. It should be green. Another good substitute here would be using shallots. Uh, you can, of course, use any part of an onion that isn't slimy, basically. Onions are magic like that. Ogres are like onions. They are not like cakes. Just remember that. So then... pile here that will go into the rice at the last minute. Chop things like me, perhaps not the way to winning a baking competition, but it gets the job done. So I will dispose of all these oniony bits that I have floating around. And now it is time to turn this down for a second. And all these vegetables have to come out for a minute so that I can make room. Now, the easiest way to do this is really to have a big bowl that you just pour this back into. Uh, I don't have a big bowl handy right now, so I'm just going to scoop most of it out. And the reason for doing this is to make room to fry a couple of eggs before you start frying the rice. So, we'll pull these all out. 
Now, of course, note that I have not yet seasoned these vegetables. That's the thing. And you can hear the sizzle settle down as I pull the vegetables out. So the next step is to fry several eggs. And as a rule, what I do is I fry one egg for each person who's gonna be eating this rice, basically. So, I go ahead, and having pulled all the vegetables out for the moment, I put a little more oil in, just a bit. And I'm gonna like half fry, half scramble these eggs. So I have probably about the right amount of rice for four people today. So I'm gonna just drop these eggs in. One, and if you let them drop from high enough, they will break automatically. Make sure you crack the eggs before you put them in the wok, please. Now, once you have all the eggs back in there, you can turn the heat back up. But I don't suggest having it on high while you're trying to crack eggs in. Three, and here's the fourth. I always get three range eggs, just to be clear. It Hi. tastes better. Fried rice, and I'm recording a video about it. Could you not talk on my video about other dinners? Thank you. Okay, so, as I was saying, here are the eggs. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn the heat up, somewhere halfway between ha low and medium. And I'm gonna, like I said, half scramble these and half fry them. I'm not gonna do a true scramble. I'm just gonna kinda let them cook and stir them slowly, and they'll like sort of fry. And I'm gonna do that until the white and the yolk are both completely cooked. Whether you're frying this in a pan or in a wok, it's important to not let it sit too much. You don't want the egg to get too hard because you're gonna be mixing it up with the rice. If it gets too hard, then you'll just have big chunks of egg instead of it being neatly distributed. take that out for a minute and put it with the vegetables. That's the easiest place. Don't worry about the egg residue in the pan. You're going to take care of that in just a second. Go. All your prep work. Now, now for the fun part. Now the, the keys to good flavor in fried rice and having it taste like what you probably expect are, first of all, fry that egg and or fry that rice and butter. I'm putting most of a stick of butter here in this pan. In fact, I've got it on low for the moment to melt the butter, and then I'm going to pour this rice in here, and it's going to brown beautifully in this brown butter. And then the second key ingredient here is actually oyster sauce. I'm going to throw a little bit of sesame oil in here and some soy sauce, but oyster sauce is the bit that's going to give it that flavor that you expect of fried rice from a restaurant. So, getting that butter nice and melted. Look at that beautiful browning butter. Almost there. Please be careful, don't ping yourself like I just did. And then, we're gonna pour in all this rice. Ow. Definitely gonna splatter ourselves like I did. Now, 
Since this were not an electric lock, I could probably just toss and turn it to get it to do what it's supposed to do. But instead, I'm going to use this wooden spoon here. Now, obviously, ideal is if your rice is not too clumpy. I went ahead and let mine clump, so I'm going to have to gently tap it a bit to make it unclump. And as you can see, like it's slowly getting incorporated with the brown butter. We're going to actually truly fry the rice a bit, and then I'll add the flavor to it. Once I get this all kind of incorporated, I'm going to turn the heat up a bit in a second. But first, I want everything all together. Which, of course, means declumping my rice a bit. As I said, I kind of put it in the container without fluffing it or anything. That was my fault. Oops. We'll see a future me will remember not to do that. Probably not. So now that we got like the butter all incorporated with the rice and most of the rice kind of just clumps, we're going to incorporate all this beautiful egg and vegetables back in. It's going to give us a beautiful, make sure you cut up the egg as you go, because otherwise, again, you'll have big clumps of egg. And then, because my arm is getting tired, we're going to just switch to using two spoons. Only do this if your wok is on low. got that all nicely incorporated we're gonna do one more big incorporation here first of all I'm going to do a very healthy dollop of some hot sesame oil which is you know about two to three tablespoons then I'm gonna do another healthy dollop of soy sauce which is also about the same two to three tablespoons but then I'm gonna do oyster sauce Definitely going to do ice cream sauce as soon as I get this open. Yep. Ah, there we go. Got to break the seal. So with oyster sauce, I'm going to be doing closer to about a quarter cup of that. Unfortunately, my core choices involve picking a glass bottle, so it's going to take a little bit to kind of shake a quarter cup or so of oyster sauce out. Now, now for the stirring. So I'm going to turn the heat up, and I'm going to incorporate it all together while it fries. So that I get my nice little crispy bits of rice while I'm also getting all the flavor in here.
Now I will tell you, that oyster sauce obviously has like some fishy stuff in it. Oyster, specifically fishy sauce, obviously. Uh, so if you cannot have shellfish, then a good alternative is to use a combination of soy sauce and poison sauce. Just keep in mind it's not going to taste exactly the same. But it will be more vegetarian. Poison sauce is a sweet sauce that has no fishy bits in it. You can also get a kind of soy sauce that is made for soup that has kelp in it if you're uh, unable to have shellfish but are completely fine with seaweed. And it tastes exactly like fish sauce and will make a good alternative. Mm. All right, so that's pretty much perfect flavor wise. So now I just need to give it a few more seconds to fry up. So I'm going to pop this up to high for just a second so I can get some crispy bits in there. And then we're all set. Unless I forget, I've got all these green onions, which I'm going to toss in there for the last few seconds of this. So the green onions still have like a little bit of that green onion crisp instead of being all guilty. And there you have it. Look at that beautiful mess. Now, enjoy your meal.